Joining us now to break down our upcoming debate with Republican Joe Kent and Democrat Marie Glusenkamp Perez is politics professor at Pacific University, Jim Moore. Jim, thanks for your time. Yeah, no problem. What do you think each candidate needs to do to win undecided voters in the middle in this upcoming debate? Well, there's kind of two things they need to concentrate on, and we've been seeing them do the first one. They've got to find the message that works. What do the undecided voters really want? What's at the top of their list? It's tricky. Because, you know, the campaign says, you know, for instance, Joe Kent says immigration is the big issue, like Republicans everywhere. Uh, Marie Glusenkamp Perez is saying abortion is a big issue. But each of the voters, immigration or abortion is going to be somewhere on their list, but it may not be a top three issue. Top three issues move voters. So you've got to figure out what are they thinking of. Is it a specific thing with the economy? Is it something in their particular town? You, th and that's tough to do. The um, way well, you can do that, knock on doors, ask and then tailor your message. We've seen so many debates this political season and it seems like so much of the messaging is focused at the voters that, that already support a given yeah. candidate. What do you think voters are looking for in a face-off like this? Well, in a face-off, they're looking for uh, several things. First of all, they want to see if anybody screws up. Um, we, you know, those flaming train wrecks are exciting and fun and, and, and they may not change minds, but they, they reinforce. It's like, oh, I'm not going to support that candidate. Or my candidate just had a really bad night, but they're, they're, they're okay. So they look for that kind of thing. Second thing, they're, if they're undecided, they're looking for something that may not be the answer to the question, but is this somebody I would like to trust with being my member of Congress? Remember, when you're elected to these offices, you're working for the people. So is this somebody you can trust to take your issues to, that kind of thing? That's more body language, kind of how they answer, not what they answer. So it's a combination of those two kinds of things. Which candidate, if either, has the most to gain in something like this? Uh, clearly Kent does, and the reason is simple, that in Congress, if you're a member of the House, it's about a 95% re-election rate, sometimes it's higher. Okay, so that means Marie Glusenkamp Perez is the favorite on that level. It's an incredibly close race. Who knows who's going to win? But so Joe Kent is the one who has the most to gain. Can he show not only that he ought to be in, but he's worth voting for to replace somebody who may be doing a job that you think is okay? And so that it, it's really on him to change things. What makes a good night for Marie Glusenkamp Perez? So if she can uh, confirm to people that this, this young, up-and-coming politician is somebody who's doing well by the district, that she's, she's aware of the issues and becoming an expert in them. Um, so that, that becomes a win for her. That becomes some way that, way that she can say, hey, I'm worth keeping in this position. You already know me, but here's why you should keep me coming back to Congress. On the flip side, what makes a good night for Joe Kent? For Joe Kent, he gets kind of two chances there. If she screws up, he can basically stand there and say, hi, better choice, okay, so it'll be really apparent. But a good night for him is if he can make the case that him being in Congress is a big deal and you ought to vote for him, not just because of the local elections, but in 2022, he did this specifically, and he's doing it a bit now because it's better for Republicans to keep control of Congress. So if he can make that case, that becomes a good night for him. This is a rematch from 2022. What do you think this race comes down to? This race is going to come down to the power of the incumbency. It's going to become, come down to turnout. So it's not an issue, it's turnout. Remember, in 2022, you have fewer voters because there's not a presidential election. Now we've got a presidential election and a hot one. And so that's going to drive turnout up. And so which side can get the turnout to come out for their candidacy becomes a crucial, crucial issue. So once again, these debates are important because they've got to enthuse people. They've got to get people to say, I am going to turn in my ballot. And that, once again, may not be an answer. It may be a personality kind of thing. But you've got to get people to say, I've got to go do that. I've got to turn that thing in. Glusenkamp Perez won this, this race two years ago. Has the district changed significantly since then? No, not fundamentally. Remember, two years ago, it had changed because we'd gone through redistricting. Uh, every 10 years, we you know, revisit all the districts, and the district had, had kind of clumped together. A Democratic part was taken off to the north, and so it was a different district. 
Now we know what that district is. It voted for her. It voted not to seat Kent. So it hasn't changed that much. Big change would happen if, for instance, there was a huge uh, demographic shift because a, an economic boom happened or a bust and people were leaving or moving in. And we haven't seen big changes like that anywhere in the district. Jim Moore, politics professor at Pacific University, thank you so much for Hey, your you're time. welcome.